Mm -hmm. Hi guys, this is Melissa Zad for Into Boxing and I am delighted to be joined by none other than Mr Johnny Nelson. Johnny, how are you doing? What's funny is seeing you standing on your tiptoes to see through the other side of that lens <laughs> to see if, if it's level. So don't worry, I can see in it, so look, if I can see them, they can see me. <laughs> no, it's because obviously when they said it's on the beach, I didn't realise it was actually on the beach, right? So I'm wearing heel boots. It's, it's not okay. And I came in some ugly crocs, but I thought I'll save them for fight night. No, no, but so I put these other ugly shoes on. So, uh, uh, but yeah, it's, it's nice. It's nice for it to be here. It's a beautiful day. I'm really glad that weather's held up, you know, ahead of Saturday night fight night. We've got a really, really interesting cruiserweight uh, competition at the top of the car, top of the bill. We've got Chris Billum Smith facing Isaac Chamberlain. Pre 50 50 fight. How do you, what, what's your take? Brave fight, brave fight by both. Uh, Chris Billum Smith's moved over to the zone to, to, to Sky. Um, um, uh, uh, Isaac Chamberlain again this fight to be on Sky to me and both fighters are good fighters Isaac Chamberlain we saw him in action against Lonzo Coley uh, he's had to go back and look his wound Chris Billen Smith made his way through the ranks I think European champion now um, strong tough determined works with the McGuigans this is the fight they wanted at home they've got it um, you hope that Chris uh, keeps winning so we have the shows down here I think this is what he wanted from his previous team uh, management team uh, you hope that Isaac uh, comes through because you know he's a very talented fighter so you'd not want to see anybody lose but someone's going to lose that's a fight game I mean do you feel like because obviously you know Chamberlain Isaac Chamberlain he's had a few setbacks in his career he's come back he's had a few um, wins quite quickly on in his fights do you think the lack of um, rounds that he's done in the ring is going to stand him in bad stead? Actually no, um, Isaac lives in the gym and just because he's not performed in public doesn't mean it's affected him and made him rusty at all. I, I know what this young man's been doing behind the scenes, he's been working on the smallest minute details um, so so when he gets in there it's not going to be an excuse, you know he's going to go in there and he wouldn't have taken this fight if they didn't think there was a, a chance for him to, 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 to put it off because it's hard going back to the drawing board so they think going back to the drawing board it's enough to beat Chris Bill Smith. Obviously we've heard that you know the winner of this fight is uh, you know in line for the IBF if I'm not mistaken um, title from Jai Obataya. I don't know if I'm saying the name right. I think I am. Um, you know, it's a huge opportunity for the for the lads. How do you feel like that pressure is going to play out on fight night? Uh, this Saturday night, will you be pressure? No, it's a great because you know this 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 goal at the end of the rainbow. You know, this is a big fight, but you know, for fight, you want you're fighting for something. And and it's as a fighter, it's better fighting as a hungry fight, not what you've, you've got to chase something, than the fight that's bellies full because you're holding on to something. These both these guys a fight for something which will make it a more entertaining fight, um, uh, a more exciting fight, uh, and a fight that both fighters will leave everything in the ring. So obviously um, on the same show we have uh, Mikel Lowell, again another cruiserweight, he's facing a southpaw opponent. As Dan just said up there, you know, it's very likely that's in preparation for Dion Juma for the long-awaited British title fight. You know, what do you think his mindset is doing right now? His mindset is he's in a pool of cruiserweights now. There are domestic fights out there for him to, to get involved with at some point in his career. And you can see that so many eyes that walked past him and also just sneered at each other. They didn't really give each other the, 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 any time of day. So, and I like that, that there's enough cruiserweights in here, dancing partners for, for fights to get in with each other. And, and when you're seeing things like you're thinking, you can see they're in the same camp. You know, there's fights that can be made. Uh, Lawrence McCauley has allegedly moved over as well. You know, so again, it's, it's just some great fights to be made, like even on the domestic level. Talking about the rest of the card, is there any particular fights that you're looking forward to? Of course, Ben Whitaker. Uh, I was with Ben Whitaker the day after we landed back in the UK this week. And uh, he, if this boy can back up the balls, this ain't, this isn't no BS. This boy, if you can back up the balls, you've got something very special on your hands. Um, and and if he can transfer that skill that he had in the amateurs. And match it with his mouth, match it with his attitude, match it with that chip on the shoulder, he will be a proper badass. Do you think it's a bit of a statement that he's opted to do a six rounder for his professional debut? Uh, yeah, it shows confidence, self belief. And, uh, and why not? You know, if he, 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 that's his good shout, realistically. 
you know, it's a, it's a bit of a soft touch being able to do a four rounder. So I was thinking, nah, nah, I don't need to do that. Nah, let's leapfrog this. Let's do this thing now. Um, talking about other things that are happening in the boxing world, uh, your thoughts, your take on the fact that Usyk Joshua 2 has landed on Sky Sports? Good. Uh, good before it was common knowledge. I was ex I was kind of gutted because we we might not get it. We might not be involved in the build-up in the fight. Now we are. Of course, I'm more than happy. Um, I'm quite sure out there in Saudi. Um, I know the Matchroom team will probably be there as well. And and there's not there's no beef between Matchroom and Sky. You know the teams get on really well. And that's just how this that just how it is. So it'd be like old times probably. Um, but it's a fight that uh, Sky is showing it, so they're gonna really build that platform and get people to know the fights on and really push it out there. It kind of makes sense as well for the you know more old school uh, boxing fans because they might not be familiar with DAZN and app services and etc. And Sky Sports is kind of you know it's uh, it's original. Yes, it is. And as I said, Sky Sports have been through what the zone are going through now. They've got to become established, get people used to them. Uh, they've got to they won't earn the crust and earn the crowd. So uh, so Sky have been where the zone are now. Uh, so uh, um, to, to be in this position to pass such a big fight, they've earned the stripes, so why not? Um, Connor Ben and Eubank, what do you make of that fight? Too many ifs. Too many ifs. And so until it signs, sealed, then I won't believe it's going to be delivered. There's too many ifs. Um, I think Eddie did a, uh, an interview yesterday saying uh, if or when, whatever the signs, the fight's been signed. And I'm trying to understand why is it not being done yet. This conversation has been going on a couple of weeks. What's the issue? So there's just too many ifs. Tell me in a couple of years' time about this fight, and then I think, all right. But right now, I'm just struggling to to get excited, excited about it. I'm a fan. You know, of course I want to watch it. Uh, but in two years' time, it's more realistic. But at this moment in time, I think it's too much of a, a weight differential uh, for this for this fight to, for us to get giddy and stupid about it. What do you make of comments where people saying that it's a cash-out fight? For who? For both. These Both these guys are in touching distance of, of, of doing big things in their career, so it's not a cash-out fight. Will they get paid, a, excuse my French, a shitload of money for the fight? Of course they will. Um, so, again, as I said, there's too many Fs in. You know, the position they're in in their career, why would they, why they do that? Chris would do it because he's thinking, there's no way this little man's going to beat me. Connor would do it because he's thinking, there's no way this big man's going to beat me. Um, but the, the businessmen behind them will say, well, why do we need that? You know, cement your legacy or stamp something in the, the books to say this is what you've achieved and then have this entertaining fight. Because that's what it is. It doesn't put any of their careers further or any back. Uh, well, it probably does if, if, if Chris lost. Um, so it's just, it's just too many ifs. Last couple of questions from me, Johnny. So obviously, um, we've just heard news that Jake Paul is going to be facing a legitimate boxer in the cruiserweight division. Actually, what do you make of him facing someone of that standing? I think great, uh, Jake Paul's a decent fighter. I do, and I think he gets stick because he's got a shitty mouth, you know, and he winds everybody up, and he gets the adulation and the attention that that accomplished fighters that have been boxing for 15, 20 years get. So he pisses people off. But I think he's a good boxer. So, so realistically, I don't think it's oh god, he's going to be found wanting. Kick and fight. So give Kenny where credit's due. To be honest, when he first came on the scene, I was the first to mock him, and after seeing him, you know, do his thing, I was like, fair play, he's he's can he can box. Yeah, but remember when Eubank Jr. came on the scene, he was mocked. Conor Ben came on the scene, he was mocked. Uh, Ricky Sun came on the scene, he was mocked. So so. The one thing you can't pretend, and that's pretend to be able to fight. You're going to be mocked and cussed and, and, and finger pointed at your butt realistically. You know, if you can fight, you can fight, and that says it all. Jay can fight. Good on him, I'll watch it. Last question. Obviously, 10th of September, we've got Clarissa Shields facing Savannah Marshall. It's so big. It's a super fight for you know, all boxing fans, but particularly for those that are really inspired by where women's boxing is going. Um, I would love to hear your prediction. Wow. Uh, so women's boxing, well, look at women's sport. 
the weekend comes, we've got the, the World Cup, uh, the Lionesses in against Germany um, uh, with the football. Great, uh, great shout. That semi final was held in Sheffield, the Sheffield United ground. Um, just down the road from me, it was like Sheffield was buzzing. So now we've got Savannah Marshall in a massive women's fight. Uh, against Clarissa Shields. I think Savannah does her. I think, I think Savannah's, she's, she's just, she's a different gravy. Clarissa is a great character. She's loud, she's brash, she's in your face. I don't think she's a, a good as box as, as, uh, as Savannah. And um, Savannah's not going to be rattled or intimidated by uh, the noise from Clarissa. So uh, we'll just wait and see. A big fight. Can't wait to see it. Johnny, I've taken up enough of your time. Thank you so much. Thank you.